Hello, science people. Today I want to talk to you about tapeworms. Probably not the conversation you usually want to have, but they are fascinating creatures. Tapeworms are from the class Cestoidea, from the phyla Platyhelminthes. They are flatworms. Okay, so let's talk about tapeworms. I am horrified just as much as the next person about getting tapeworms, but I am less horrified about getting tapeworms as I am getting a sporocyst. <laughs> To understand what I mean, let's talk a little bit about a tapeworm's life cycle. Okay, so a tapeworm has an intermediate host and a main host. An intermediate host is a host that the parasite takes on in order to wait until the main host where it can reproduce and live its adult cycle. So with a tapeworm, what happens is the eggs are in fecal matter. They're in feces somewhere. And so what happens is the intermediate host ingests that feces somehow. The eggs end up in the intermediate host, they hatch, they become a larvae, the larvae then burrow into the meat of that intermediate host, they eat a little bit until they're large enough to become a sporocyst. The sporocyst is a hard little dormant form of the tapeworm. The sporocyst stays in the meat of the intermediate host, waiting for that intermediate host to be eaten by a larger animal. Once the larger animal eats that intermediate host, the stomach acid will then revitalize or initiate the process of the tapeworm becoming an adult. The tapeworm then moves into the intestines of the main host, where it then reproduces and then releases eggs in the fecal matter of the main host, starting the whole cycle over. Okay, so let's talk about some ways that humans get tapeworms. So we can get tapeworms from pork or from beef. So we can get the pork tapeworm, which lives in pigs, and we can get the beef tapeworm, which lives in cows. And so what happens is a cow will eat fecal matter that was on the grass where it is grazing. So if you have a cow that is grazing out in the field and if somebody that had tapeworms defecated into the grass, so that means that there are eggs, tapeworm eggs in that grass, they're microscopic. The cow comes by, eats that grass, then the egg hatches in the cow, becomes the larvae, then eats a little bit of the cow, burrows into the meat of the cow and becomes a sporocyst, where it just stays there as a sporocyst. At that point, it's not really harming the cow, it is just sitting there in the meat of the cow. Well, then a human comes by, kills that cow, makes some meat out of that cow, and if the meat is not cooked properly, if you have undercooked meat and you eat that meat, then what happens is the sporocyst is revitalized in your stomach acid, it becomes the full-grown tapeworm, it goes to your intestines where it latches on, and then it starts reproducing. Now, tapeworms have segments, but it is not a segmented worm. Each one of those segments is called a proglottid. So the scolex, which is the head, hangs onto the intestines, and then it grows these new proglottids, new segments. Each proglottid is almost a new tapeworm. Each proglottid is full of eggs. And so these proglottids drop eggs into the feces of the main host or the human. Now, if that feces ends up in a field again somewhere, the cow eats it and that's what starts the whole process. Now, I mentioned that I'm not as horrified about getting a tapeworm as I am getting a sporocyst. Let's talk about that. Okay, so if I were to get a tapeworm, if I were to eat undercooked meat and I get this tapeworm hanging on to my intestines, we have medication for that. We have things that we can take that will poison the tapeworm and then you defecate out the tapeworm. Yeah, totally disgusting, not something I wanna experience, but it is livable. You can take this medication, the tapeworm lets go, and then you release the tapeworm and you are done. So whenever there's medication that I can take that will help cure whatever parasitic infection I have, I'm not as scared. Whenever it's an infection of a parasite that I can't get rid of or I could potentially live with for life, 
That is when I'm really afraid. And that's what could happen with a sporocyst. So let's talk about that. So what if I am not the main host? What if I'm accidentally the intermediate host? What if I'm the cow? Well, then I could potentially live with a sporocyst my entire life. So let's talk about how that happens. Well, if I am to ingest feces that carry the tapeworm eggs, then the tapeworm eggs hatch, turn into a larvae, and now they treat me as the intermediate host. They're going to live off of me a little bit, then they're gonna burrow into my flesh and become a sporocyst, and they will stay there waiting for me to get eaten so they can infect a main host. Well, they could potentially burrow into my muscle, become a sporocyst, and then that's it. I have these sporocysts in my body for life, unless I get a surgery that can remove them, or they're in a place where blood flow can get, and I can take antibiotics that can kill them, which is possible. But one of the most horrifying parts about sporocysts is they have a tendency to move towards our brain. And so the larvae, when it's ready to be a sporocyst, can hitch a ride on your blood and they can flow to your brain where they can then nestle up to your brain and become a sporocyst. So you'll have a little buddy stuck to your brain for potentially life. Now, why not get rid of it? Well, brain surgery is really scary. Brain surgery is dangerous. And so we don't always wanna do brain surgery. We can also take antibiotics that could kill them, but there's the blood brain barrier, which makes it really difficult for antibiotics to get to the brain. And so you could potentially have these sporocysts in your brain. Now, sporocysts do grow a little bit. And so what could happen is the sporocysts start growing a little, pushing on your brain, causing inflammation, and then it could cause all kinds of problems like strokes, or it could cause you to have seizures, or lots of different things that could happen because they are growing and pushing against your brain. And so I am much more afraid of getting a sporocyst than I am getting a tapeworm. And you might think, well, Mr. Bird, why are you afraid of that? Do you eat poop a lot? Are you worried about ingesting eggs? Well. What you might not be aware of is all of us have ingested fecal matter at some point in our life. Fecal matter is all around us. Sometimes it's really hard to avoid. So how does this happen? Well, this is why we have health laws that say any worker who prepares food needs to wash their hands after using the restroom. Let's say that there is a food server that has a tapeworm. That means that they have tapeworm eggs in their fecal matter. And so they go into the bathroom, they go poop, and then they wipe their anus, and then they get eggs on their fingernails and in their fingers. And so because they're wiping, these eggs are microscopic, they can still end up on your fingers. And if that worker decides not to wash their hands, just to walk right on out and go back to preparing your food, then you're gonna end up with microscopic eggs on your food and fecal matter. And so when you eat that food, then those eggs will hatch and then they will become a sporocyst inside your body treating you as though you are the intermediate host. Now you might think, whoa, that is disgusting. How often does this happen? Well, we hope not that much. We hope it doesn't happen that often. We hope that at your restaurants that you visit or at the fast food place that you visit, that people are washing their hands when they use the restroom. But it is more common to happen in places where people work in fields. And so if you're a farm worker and you work in a field, you are more likely just to go to the restroom out in the field and there's nowhere to wash your hands and you'll continue to pick fruit or pick vegetables or to do whatever it is you're doing. And that's why it's so important that we also wash our fruit and our vegetables. And also it's important that we create facilities for farm workers or for people that are gathering food. So that way they can also be sanitary and healthy and happy. And so this does happen. What about street vendors? Let's say that I'm at a club and I come outside and I smell, Oh, those lovely bacon wrapped hot dogs. And I go, mmm, I gotta get me some of that. And so I walk over there and I get me a bacon wrapped hot dog and it is delicious. Well, what if an hour before 
I got that bacon wrapped hot dog, the street vendor, they had to use the restroom and they wouldn't use the restroom, but there was nowhere to wash their hands and they go right back to preparing your food. And if they had a tapeworm, then they are going to have those eggs on their hands. So it is actually pretty easy to catch a tapeworm and get the larval form. And that freaks me out. It happens more in countries that have more laxed food preparation laws where they don't have to come in and check the hygiene of the workers and of the facilities. And so you're more likely to catch a tapeworm in those types of countries where in the United States, we try and make sure that we have clean facilities that are preparing food, but it could still happen. Well, I hope that you're not completely disgusted and I hope you enjoyed learning about tapeworms. I'll catch you next time.